We're speaking to a man who's approaching his 200th game of AFL football. He's a premiership player. He was a favourite at Essendon. Now he's a favourite at Melbourne. And we had Mason Cox in last year telling us about his graphic eye injury, Darcy. And, and our man's just been telling us about his lacerated kid. You just forget how tough the footballs are. And I'm not going to call him the pig. I'll call him Michael. Joins <laughs> us uh, here on the Friday Huddle. Michael, lovely to see you. How are you going? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me on, guys. Um, yeah, the kidney's not as bad as it sounds. Well, what happened? A lacerated kidney, man. Uh, yeah, 20 seconds, I think, into the game against Geelong uh, a couple of Thursday nights ago. A bit of friendly fire. Harrison Petty just flew over and, yeah, need me and went down for a few seconds and then I thought I was sooking up a little bit. But, um, yeah, after the game, I, I realised I, I did quite well to get through the game and, yeah, the scans showed that I had a... Had a little laceration there, and I've missed a few weeks. So. It sounds painful. It, the, the nickname, The Pig, is that just James that uses that, or is that you in day-to-day -day life? Uh, it's a long it's a long story. Oh, well, we've, you, got, we've, got, well we've got 11 and a half minutes. I, uh, <laughs> I, I had mates from back when I was playing at Frankston, so there you go. There's a, pig, a few pigs down that way anyway. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, they, he started it. I'm uh, not really sure why, but it stuck. And I had it written on my bag one day when the first day when I walked into Essendon. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Dean Wallace stuck. Uh, he was the coach at the time and, and Sean Wellman and a few of the other old boys just stuck with it and it hasn't hasn't left me since. I'm not sure my missus is wrapped with it. But, um, <laughs> Mum and dad would be wrapped too. Uh, they, uh, the they? old man doesn't care too much, but uh, he actually calls me pig. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't think my mum likes Michael. So, yeah. so when do we see you back in action, mate? Uh I'm going to have a run around tomorrow. I haven't, I haven't done any contact for three weeks now, so it'll be good to hit some bodies and have a little run around and a scratch match, I think, against Sandy for, for Casey or, or our reserves. And, um, yeah, and hopefully, you know, do enough to, to show the, the match committee that I can play next week. Your star-studded uh, practice match hit out, given Brody Grundy will go around in the, the same game. Yeah, Brody's uh, unfortunately you know, out of the teams tonight, but his attitude's been unbelievable. Um, I actually spoke to him today, and he's looking forward to... Just going back and, and working on his fall craft, working on his rock, rock craft and uh, hopefully putting a performance in and uh, proving the guys wrong that he should be playing out there tonight because he's such a quality player. Chatting to Michael Hibbert, superstar from the Melbourne Footy Club. What about life outside of footy? Hibbert, you're getting towards 200 games and you start eyeing off uh, maybe what life after footy looks like. Have you got any thoughts? Uh, uh, funnily enough, I've, I've applied for the uh, the fire service, um, fire rescue Victoria, and I, I got through the next stage the other day. So I'm hoping to, to tick that off over the next however many months, and um, we'll go from there. Whether I uh, keep playing footy or st I'll definitely pursue that uh, in the future. I don't know whether it's going to be the very near future or or the later future, but that's something. Not that an I'd easy thing to get get into, is it? I think I've passed yeah. the hardest part, so okay. um, yeah, the academic part. I think I'll be right with the physical, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, um, yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll see. That's something I definitely want to do, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm pursuing that now, and we'll see that. Has there uh, been any other? Uh, Kane Corns. Was it high, was a firefighter? Became a firefighter. Last 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 a day. Yeah. <laughs> Can last we send him back firefighting potentially, mate? <laughs> no, is that? I think he ran away. <laughs> when you okay. say when you say you got through the hardest part being the academic, how well, it's an aptitude test. So yeah. How long was it? Uh, probably an hour and a half, and you know, 150 questions, and, and you're ranked essentially yep. out of I think 5,000 people might apply, and you've got to be in the top 700. So I um yeah I got that. And Did they I've tell had, you which number you were? No, nah, not yet. So hopefully um hopefully I'm right up there, and that, <laughs> that puts me in good stead. But yeah, I've had a few mates that I've played footy with over the few years. Tate Pears, Courtney Johns, they're in uh, they're in. They helped me out through the process. So four days on, four days off too. It's beautiful, isn't it? Gig. Yeah, and I heard the nights you get to have a little kip most of the time. So that's uh, <laughs> unless you have to go into a raging inferno. Yeah, yeah. and I'm happy with that. Um, I think that... Ended up to the end, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, that, that, that stuff excites me, so yeah, I'm, nice. I'm looking forward to that if, if that's how it works out. And we've all seen the, the vision of Clayton Oliver. It's quite often that players have those, not heated discussions, but pointed discussions with the assistant coaches, the coach, fitness staff, even the physios. It happens quite often. All the time. Uh, I've, I've had plenty of soft, soft tissues over the years and I think, you know, they'll say it's a four-week injury and two weeks in, I'm telling them I'm right to play. Like, I think even, you know, just recently, I, you know, I played out the game with the kidney and I felt fine after three days. I was saying, mate, I can play next I'm week. What's the, what's the go? So I think cl clarity, how, clarity how, how competitive he is as a bloke, uh, I don't think he has much experience with soft tissues. Um, you know, it was... was Biting back, and and anyone that's played footy, there's a few in the room here that you, that's what happens all the time. So um, yeah, I'm not surprised with that. It was nothing news to me. Like we've seen it all the time, all the time. And yeah, I think Clary's going to listen a bit, listen in a bit more, and hopefully come back and be good for it.
Michael, you'd love to be out there tonight being a competitive uh, person that you are. It's a massive game, isn't it? For What's at stake for both clubs? Brisbane obviously trying to win at this venue, but for, more to your point, the, uh, the need to win to, to stay in the doubles finals spot. Yeah, definitely. Friday night against, you know, three versus four. Um, you know, I'm getting a bit jealous even looking at the ground now, but it's uh, it's huge. We, you know, it's coming towards the end of the year. We need the, need to bank the wins to lock this top four spot in. And, um, you know, it's like a, it's a eight-point swing, really, against a team that's going to be fighting for that as well. And uh, I'm looking forward to watching. Even though I don't really like watching, I'll be out there playing. But um, it's going to be a cracking game, that's for sure. Your little mate Jakey Melksham will be playing tonight. You go, you go back a long time. What type of friendship and mateship and relationship do you build with someone that you spent time at two footy clubs with? And obviously at Essendon, there were some really difficult times for you and the entire playing group where I'm sure you really lent on your mates and, and probably him in particular. Oh, yeah, we're tight. We're you know, best, best man of each other's weddings. Um, he, he's tighter than me in terms of what he puts into his pockets. He, uh, <laughs> I end up paying for everything all the time. But uh, <laughs> he's, uh, nah, he's, a, he's a cracker. You know, we do everything together. We've, you know, we've both got kids now and are close with our families. And you know, he's a mate that I'm going to you know, We have footy, footy mates you know, for a period of time. But he's definitely a friend that uh, I'll, I'll have forever. I know that. He's a... I guess a brother to me in a way, um, but yeah, you know, it was good to see him out playing quite well last week, and he's playing again. He's had to fight well, fight hard for his spot back in this team. Friends are one thing. There's always weirdos at every club. You've been at two. Come up with the biggest one at each club. Jeez, oh, Kyle Remus was right up there. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, uh, Remus. <laughs> Back when I was, uh, yeah, it's always the Ruckmans you probably haven't heard of. There's a few rookie list blokes over over the years. What was he like, Taji Woden, coming into the side? It was it was great to see his dad speaking and and him playing well. He's uh oh, he's a ripping kid. As like what you see is what you get. He's he's a class player. Um, it's awesome that he got his opportunity because he's he's worked on his craft a, a year and a half now in the VFL and put some awesome performances, been emergency a plenty of times and to see him play last week and he didn't look out of place one bit. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do tonight after probably getting rid of those nerves last week. Obviously the first game is always, always hard, but uh, Friday night on the G only gets um, probably gets more nerve-wracking to be honest, but he, he's, uh, he's made of the right stuff and he's going to be a good player. As we let you go, mate, one memory from the Premiership that we may have seen on the field, that we may not have seen on the field, or something that when you think of the Premiership, and I'm sure it must be amazing to have Melbourne fans come up to you all the time and say, I never thought I'd see it, and, you know, my grandfather saw one, and my grandparents saw one. What's the memory for you? On field during the game, um, I think Clayton Oliver's goal. I think when we put three on him, four on him really quickly, um, that was probably the one where I was like, gee, we, we, might, we probably going to win this now. Because there was a period in the second quarter where I was genuinely thinking, it's going to be a long couple of days. Um, they went 19 points yeah. up and I'm like, this is going to suck. So uh, <laughs> when that, when we piled them on, I was like, wow, this is this is incredible. I haven't heard a, heard a crowd scream like it. And, um, yeah, and then the carry on afterwards is probably my favourite, to be honest, after we've all won. <laughs> and then the, the week that went on after was, uh, was good fun. So, yeah, unreal. Clary's goal. Chief, is that when you declared the dogs home and Dars got real edgy and said, <laughs> no. don't start bringing that language to the table? I said to him, I thought they were one goal off, right. nearly putting it away, and I've just been vindicated by right. the feeling of the opposition. Oh, I'd like to go to the table on that. Yeah, cannot I, lose the dogs to yield out. That's what he went with, and it got you very edgy. Yeah. So yeah. Collingwood won at three-quarter time back in round two as well. Well, that's right. That's <laughs> I thought right. it was over. Um, hey, Michael, we appreciate you coming in, mate. Great to see you in person, and hopefully uh, it all goes well for you tomorrow, and we'll see you out where you deserve to be really, really soon. Cheers, boys.